I do want to talk about how you guys came up with the name, which I think is yeah. awesome. So you guys are sitting on the largest tectonic plate on Earth. Is that yeah, yeah. That so true? The, the Pacific plate. Yeah. yeah, and you know we're. So it's divided by, the North Atlantic Plate and the Pacific Plate are divided by the San Andreas Fault. Mm -hmm. And growing up here in LA, we were always, you know, we experienced earthquakes as kids and, and it was just a part of our lives. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, some people have hurricanes and tornadoes and, and we have earthquakes. Yeah, you know, you wake yeah. up at four in the morning and you're like, yeah, that wasn't that bad, go back to sleep. <laughs> but you know, it is a part of our lives. And uh, I come from a science background. Uh, I have a BS in biochemistry. Um, and so, you know, doing geology and like the, you know the science twist on everything really meant a lot to me. I would love to talk a little bit about how you partnered with the Global Conservation Force. Yeah, part of the craft beer community is about like giving back and and working with your you know your, your neighborhood and, and and you know and even globally sometimes. Um, and so we definitely uh, one of our mug club members uh, Roxanne uh, Losi uh, came to the tap room and um, she works at the LA Zoo. And uh, she said that she's part of this uh, conservation group called Global Conservation Force, and uh, that they would love to host an event here in LA. Now, the, the nonprofit's actually based in San Diego, um, and they do most of their events down there, uh, but she wanted to start like an LA chapter and, uh, and host an event here at the brewery. And they had just done one down in San Diego, I forget. They said they had an event at a brewery down there. Okay. and. Uh, that they donated some of the proceeds to the nonprofit, right? And so, being a biologist, I was like, "Well, yeah, of course, like, that's right up your this alley. Is perfect. Yeah, <laughs> like, perfect." So I was like, "Yeah, let's." Uh, so what the Global Conservation does is uh, it raises money and it, it sends out equipment uh, like boots and water bladders and backpacks to the anti-poaching units in South Africa. Um, and actually, they're working in multiple places in the world now, but ma mostly in South Africa. Um, Recently, they, we actually raised a bunch of uh, Belgian min minwals. We can get them trained and get them placed at different um, uh, reserves. Mm -hmm. And when the, the poachers are in, you know, they dr just drive into these reserves. Mm -hmm. And when they drive up and they see a sign that says, you know, K-9 on duty, mm -hmm. they're not even gonna bother. They're just gonna turn around. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's just a deterrent from them even entering the parks. So we ended up doing a line of beers. So we have, uh, the first one was, uh, the White Rhino IPA. Um, then we did the Earthshaker Stout, followed by the Tall Blonde. Uh, so White Rhino, of course, is for White Rhinos. Uh, Earthshaker Stout uh, is for um, elephants, and Tall Blonde uh, is for giraffes. It's a, a German half. And uh, then we just did a, a Penguin Defender, which is a Kelly Common, mm -hmm. and that's uh, actually the number one trafficked animal in the world for its scales. And, and yeah, almost yeah. nobody knows about them. Yeah, they're little tiny ant eaters and. And uh, yeah, they, they definitely need some more awareness out there. So, so we do these line of beers to try to create awareness and, and you know, show the, the world that, you know, that all this stuff is happening and we can actually help. They sent me out last November and so I actually got to meet the, the, the anti-poaching units at, mu at multiple different reserves and see like the difference in progression of these units. Um, and we handed over like night vision goggles and, and backpacks and stuff. Um, it was amazing, yeah. It was an amazing trip to see all that. And we, we actually started the talks with the Kino 9 Kennels, um, you know, to, to move forward with the next project that we were working on. We even sent drones out there. So, like, they have, like, drones that they fly up and they try to herd the animals away from the poachers as they're, like, tracking them down and stuff. So it's amazing all the work they do. Um, and it's, it's great to be part of it, you know. So, That's amazing. It's yeah. amazing that a brewery in, in Monrovia is yeah, making this part. much of a difference. Yeah, you it's know amazing, what I mean? yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, since, since you've opened in 2012, has there, have there been any other breweries that opened in Monrovia that you've helped get, yeah, you know, so, get going? Yeah, so since then, and we've heard from them that uh, we had a story written, uh, I think, it was might have been the Pasadena Star News that talked about how the city, like, you know, made it easy for us to come in. And we actually heard that the other breweries that opened, we have a Hop Secret that opened, um, and then shortly, uh, I think about a, maybe a year ago, um, we had Wing Walker and Overtown open up. Um, and, I, and then adjacent to us in Arcadia, we had um, Mount Lowe open up, and I think that was late 2016. Mm -hmm. So definitely there's been, you know, we have four other breweries mm -hmm. in very close, clo clo uh, close proximity to us. Mm -hmm. um, and Overtown told us that they read the article about how Monrovia was open to craft beer, and, mm -hmm. and that's why they, they were really looking at, uh, at Monrovia. Yeah. It's amazing, you know. We got the, the one of the largest street fairs in you know LA County here, 
Um, the city's very like tight knit, and you know, we, we walk down the street, and you know, everybody. It's like small town feel, but you're still in LA. You know? Yeah, you're still close to everything. Else. That's incredible, yeah. man. So in a way, you kind of paved the road for anyone on this side of LA to kind of get going, right? Yeah, like yeah. Opening up their um, own doors. You know, yeah, I mean, we have a lost out here, and then as you go farther out, there's uh, you know, um, last name brewing out there, and they've been around a little longer than us mm -hmm. too. Um, but yeah, here in Monrovia, definitely, yeah. we were one of the we were the first in this little area. So when we first started the brewery, we uh, we definitely you know looked at what everybody was doing, and yeah, we can make a blonde, we can make a brown ale, we can make an IPA and a stout, and we would be like every other brewery out there. Um, but you know, we were all Latin, and we wanted to bring our heritage into the beer community, mm -hmm. and definitely making an Archata stout, you know, a milk stout with. Uh, Ceylon cinnamon, which is like the best cinnamon in the world. Um, uh, dark chocolate and uh, Madagascar bourbon vanilla. Like, it's, it sounds like a perfect stout to me. And and to bring out that, that cinnamon, cinnamon character to like remind people about horchata, honestly, it reminds a lot of people about uh, Abuelita's chocolate. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a cross. So it's actually based on a Nicaraguan recipe of horchata where they actually use dark chocolate instead of rice. And so you get like that crossover between horchata and like abuelita's hot chocolate, mm -hmm. and, and you know it really you know, I mean that it's a huge sense of pride for me, like to be able to make that beer and 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 have my heritage. And then you know guava IPA, it has uh, Ecuadorian uh, pink guavas. Our mango IPA uh, has uh, uh, Ecuadorian mangoes. Mm -hmm. uh, we do our I have the storm is a hibiscus. Uh, um, wit, so it's uh, a Belgian wit brewed with hibiscus, and so you get that like a mica, you know, drink that we all grew up with, you know, coming from it. Yeah. So not only do we make these like Latin-inspired beers, but we also have the Shockwave Kolsch, uh, which we actually just recently got second at the California State Fair for. I was gonna bring yeah. that up. That's it's a, one of my great, favorite dude. beers. Congratulations like, it's crisp on that. And, and light, and, and it's an amazing Kolsch. Did you have a hand in the uh, in the process with this one as well? Um, so I brewed that one quite a few times already. I, I finally got it to the point where I think it's you know it's really decent. Mm -hmm. like the subtleness of the hops is there, but you still get a nice crisp dry finish out of a you know what the cold should be. You know? Absolutely, very refreshing. Yeah, I was talking to Stephen about this, and he was saying that this would be one of the beers that. If a casual person walked into your uh, your establishment here, this would be the one of the beers that they, he would recommend. Oh yes, definitely. How did you feel it's about actually that? probably our number one seller. Really? Yeah. Gotcha. That's that's amazing. Um, is that the beer that you uh, like? Do you run out of this beer at all, or is it beer that's always going to be available? I try not to because it's the only one I drink really. <laughs> <laughs> so when it's getting low, I'm like time to brew another one. So I have an, I have another batch going right now too. Oh, that's amazing, dude. That's freaking awesome. And it's always improving. You know, I'm finding little things that I don't like about it, and I'm like, you know, this needs to be. A little bit more aromatic, so you know I'm gonna throw a little bit more hops at the end, you know, mm -hmm. try to get that aroma out. Gotcha. So uh, next year, hopefully, we'll get a cold beer. Oh, I'm sure you will, yeah. man. I'm sure you will, especially if you're always tweaking it a little bit. Oh, like, yeah. there, there's no such thing as perfection, right? Oh no. We're only striving yeah. for it. It's all and we, that's your all palate we always changes, so you're always looking for something more out of it. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Now, as far as with this beer here, um, when you uh, like when you were describe like if you were to describe this to someone that's coming in that isn't necessarily into their hop heads, for an example, yeah. like how would you how would you sell this beer to them? Oh, three words: crisp, dry, refreshing. That's it. That's that's exactly what this beer is. Especially here in California, where yeah. it's mainly warm out. Oh yeah, that's yeah, this, definitely this something summer, that should be looking like, for. We've been going through pegs. Our regulars love this beer. Every time someone walks in, the regulars always recommend this beer. And now you always get people that are like, "Oh wow, I didn't think it would taste like that." You know, it's better than the stuff I drink. You know, which is great because now we're grabbing them into craft beer. And we're trying to like show them there's a lot more to beer than just you know the normal stuff you're used to. Like kind of step out of your box a little bit. Mm -hmm. Explore. All right, so this is a shockwave here. This is it what you're drinking here. Yeah, cheers. cheers to you. Cheers to you, master yeah. drinkers. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's got a really, you hit it right on, like crisp, dry, very refreshing. It's got a very subtle sweetness to it, though. Yeah, yeah. Very subtle. Yeah. That's, that's not the, overwhelming. Uh, that's the yeah. yeah it's got not that little, overwhelming. Little cracker in there, yeah. A little bit, a little bit, which is really nice. It's not overwhelming at all. It doesn't linger. Um, that dry finish is what, for me personally, was what is, is really winning me over. Yeah. Um, it's got and that very sh that that 
it's almost as if it were almost too carbonated in the beginning, but it's yeah. not. It's got a really nice yeah, yeah. sharp bite to it. Yeah. It's almost like you're drinking a soda water, but with beer flavor to yeah, it. Exactly. But it's got a really yeah. nice flavor to it. You know, a really nice dry flavor to it. That's fantastic, seriously. So this is Shockwave, right? Shockwave. Uh, going back to the beer that we have here, uh, what is this here? Uh, this is like the uh, Earthshaker Oatmeal Stout. Is this one of the more uh, popular beers that you have on? Um, this is actually a beer we do for uh, GCF. They wanted a stout uh, with an elephant theme, so we something big and bold, you know, just like an elephant, right? And um, so I came up with this uh, newer version because it used to be a milk stout, so a lot of people are lactose intolerant. So I was like, let's just do an oatmeal stout, give them that same creaminess, but, you know, without the lactose. And so for this one, you get like a bold, bitter chocolate flavor, and you get hints of uh, fruitiness out of the yeast, uh, and it's all nitrogen, so it's even better, so it's a lot creamier. So what uh, what flavor should I be looking for when I uh, take my first sip? A uh, bit of chocolate and a bit of uh, dark fruit in there. Dark fruit, awesome. And what is the alcohol percentage on this? Uh, it's about seven and a half. Percent. Seven and a half. So it's not not too uh, no, it's, not, it's too not too high. Yeah. I can have a few of these and still yeah. be okay to walk around and socialize oh, yeah. Yeah. for sure. All right. Well, cheers again, my friend. Thank cheers. you again. Cheers, to you master drinkers. Right off the nose, I'm getting that dark chocolate. I'm getting oh, yeah. a little bit of that green smell that you get from oh, the yeah. oats. Really nice. Wow, it's got a really nice silk texture to it. Oh, yeah. Really milky, but like you said, there's no lactose in it. Yeah. Getting that from the actual yeah. oatmeal. That's, yeah, from the oatmeal. Very much on that dark chocolate, which I'm a huge fan of. Oh, yeah. I think anything sweeter than dark chocolate is just too much. You're just tasting sugar at that point. Yeah. That is a damn well made, a damn good beer, my friend. Very well made. Serious. And it's on nitrous as well, so you're able to pick up extra flavors on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You get yeah. that. That creaminess really comes out. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, does the guava change the color at all? Does it uh, no, no, it doesn't. Um, and so the guava, uh, the sugar ferments out, but you still get that nice guava aroma on the nose, and uh, it kind of pairs with the bitterness of the beer really nicely, gotcha. uh, being a West Coast uh, base. Um, so it's six and a half percent. We're not using, um, we're not using uh, extracts. We're actually using puree for it. And so you get like instead of getting like that candy Jolly Rancher character. You actually get like the the actual fruit character with with none of that like because if you make you know you make candy you're just gonna use extracts you're not gonna use puree and uh, there's a big difference in it really yeah. so if you want to give that yeah a try. absolutely cheers to you yeah cheers to you master drinkers so you can definitely smell the guava on the nose right off the bat I definitely yeah picking that up. It's, it's really nice and then uh, you know you get nice you know West Coast you know bitterness. Um, it's only six and a half percent alcohol, so you can which definitely is, I mean, drink which it. Is, which is, like, you know, that's at a moderate, moderate level. level. Yeah, very, very For much West so. Coast, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's not crazy, like, eight percent or anything. I'm actually picking up a lot of those tropical flavors. Yeah. The guava, for sure. That guava, just, you know, the bitterness of the guava pairs with the West Coast IPA. 100%. Amazingly, yeah. 100%. And you mean that the, the residual part on the palate is still that guava yep. fruit flavor. You get that guava really and nice. just that, you know, that nice backbone of bitterness that kind mm -hmm. of goes throughout. It's definitely a, a great approachable, you know, IPA. It's a West Coast IPA, but it's super approachable, kind of like the Hazy Do you want to try the Absolutely. Eye of the Storm next? Love to, yeah. yes. So yeah, this is a Belgian wit brewed with uh, hibiscus. And so you get a little bit of tartness coming from the hibiscus. It gives it a nice pink hue. Um, and it, honestly, it's like the perfect summertime beer. Like you get, it, it, it's like that lawn chair beer that you're gonna sit out on, on the patio and, and, mm -hmm. and just enjoy. The color alone, yeah. buddy. I mean, it's like Steven. a rosé almost, yeah. And this is one of the original beers that you guys came up with, or is this no, like a newer this one? one? Kinda, I forget how long ago it was, but maybe like two, three years ago we started making this one. Yeah, it was our Hermica, you know, our Hermica drink beer site, yeah. I don't know if the, the color is coming through on the video here, but that is a very sexy rose color. Dude. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm digging it, for sure. Get a nice rose in, yeah. Yeah, if you don't mind me asking, per batch, how much hibiscus flowers are you guys using? Jeez. You don't have to give the exact number, but like a roundabout. It's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot? It's like a sack of hibiscus. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. I bet, I bet yeah. it smells green in here, though, oh, yeah. while you're brewing. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, the orchata that when you throw that cinnamon in, yeah, and that's oh, the best part. Nice. Like. Yeah, that cinnamon really comes. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. Too, yeah. Cheers to you again. Thank you so much. Cheers to you, master drinkers.
And so you can smell the hibiscus on it I a little do. bit. And then that Belgian like character kind of mm -hmm. coming through. Um, but You know what, to be honest, I'm picking up the hibiscus, the flavor of the hibiscus, more yeah. than I'm getting it on the nose. Yeah. But that it really does complement well with it, that, with that yeah. Belgian style flavor. Exactly. That Belgian wit goes perfectly with the hibiscus. Like that tart, little bit of tartness from the hibiscus, but that Belgian wit, like breadiness, like comes, mm -hmm. you know, shining through. That is really nice. Because like hibiscus is known for being more of like a tart yeah. style tea. Exactly. So it yeah. kind of helps balance out that, what you said, that the bread sweetness that you get from yeah. like Belgian wits. Exactly. That is really nice. And, and I actually like the clarity as well. Yeah, it's the clarity really. clarity is really clean. No, this is a great summer beer. Is there another beer that you would recommend for, uh, you know, our viewers to kind of come out and try? Uh, so we're probably going to do a uh, pumpkin spice uh, stout for uh, November. And I'm working on a blueberry muffin stout. A blueberry time. muffin stout. Yeah. Cannot wait to try that. I'm coming back. Oh yeah. Gary. I'm coming that's back. That's all right. That's all right. We're getting into the holiday season, so you're gonna see a lot more holiday inspired beers and stuff like that. Are you gonna be bottling or canning that? Uh, we might. Okay. Thinking about it. We'll, see okay. how, we'll do one batch and then we'll see how it comes out. Yeah. And, you know. If not, I'm gonna show up with the with a with a crowler. Just oh, have yeah. you have oh, you we fill that up for you. Crowlers. Yeah. yeah, dude, for <laughs> sure, for sure. And then uh, the, uh, lastly. Um, for anyone coming into your uh, your your tasting room here, just kind of hanging out and trying out your beers, what kind of atmosphere should they be expecting? Oh, it's it's just like hanging out at somebody's house, man. Like everyone here knows each other and stuff like that. Everyone like regulars, they call each other like, hey, we're gonna come hang out at Pacific Play, you know. So we get a lot of people that know each other, and all the customers are very inclusive. New customers, they always recommending them beers and talking to them and stuff like that. So it's a pretty homey vibe here. And originally, we actually only had picnic tables in here. And the idea of that was to put people, to force people to sit next to each other. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't believe how hard it actually is to do that. <laughs> people, like, two people would be sitting at a picnic table for six and, like, nobody else would sit there. So we, we actually moved over to the booths to, like, kind of, like, you know, give some people, like, you know, smaller tables to sit at. And then we still have this big, long center table mm -hmm. just so people can sit next to each other and have those conversations. Because... Yeah. I mean, that's the vibe you're supposed to get at breweries. Like, you're coming in to have a beer. You know, we usually don't have the music, like, you know, blasting loud or anything. It's about ha being able to have a conversation, like, being able to have a beer, to try a set of beers, to learn a new style that you didn't know about. Uh, we usually have food um, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Um, and so you can come in or bring your own food or order food from the vendors and uh, kind of sit down and, and have, a, have a good time, you know. What's your take so far of this uh, this brewery? I love it. I, I didn't realize it was here. You know, kind of a uh, kind of tucked away. I like the artwork, um, and you can just tell that they've invested a lot of time, energy, and heart and soul into the space. So I can always appreciate you know the kind of effort. As far as just from like you walking in and you trying the the, the your very first round at this uh, this brewery, yeah. um, what would you recommend as far as if someone were coming in here for the very first time? Like how, how would you describe the atmosphere? Very welcoming. I mean, yeah, pretty much figure it out when you walk in. Just kind of uh, what the what the vibe is, and just uh, you know, ask really anyone. It seems like uh, not only do the, the people who work here kind of know what's going on, but the people who are you know guests here kind of know what's going on so you can pretty much ask anyone gotcha. well, what's what's the atmosphere like here like on a busier night on a night where there's like a lot of people hanging out like how, how would you describe the atmosphere oh it's packed and it's just yeah. good fun good food sometimes they have really good barbecue here at night especially on saturday nights oh, it's really good food uh, good atmosphere they do games a lot of games trivia nights the last one i came to was uh, how you met your mother that was a cool, oh, that's good cool, show, man. popular show, and yeah, I really like it. That's awesome. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I just stop by and get the famous German coach right there. German coach, man, that's Shockwave. Yeah. Shockwave's fantastic. Well, hey, Abel, thank you so much for your time, dude. Appreciate Cheers. it. Cheers to you, Master Drinkers.